Okay, good morning, everyone. We'll call the meeting of the Health and Human Services Committee of August 18th to order. See, with a visual roll, we have a full complement, including four people in the room, so we can dispense of roll calls on every event. Do we have any public comment this morning? No public comment. All right, to bring that chairman's report, just uh, thank you all for being here. I look forward to the next four months and uh, everyone's cooperation to continue to move forward, all the good work that we've done over the years. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of August 4th, 2020. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions? There being none, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, and the minutes are approved. Uh, we move Steve up to do his um, his presentation. So we'll do the Veterans Assistant Commission presentation and budget request, Steve. It's all yours. All right. So we're requesting the same amount as we did last year, which is a total of four hundred twelve thousand three hundred ninety one dollars. Four one two three nine one. We submitted it on time with finance and everything. We also, with, with that, we also submitted our 10, 20, and 30% reduction scenarios. And I contacted Nicole on Monday, which was yesterday. She said all of my numbers were good. Everything was okay with everything that we submitted. So um, that's really my budget request to you guys. Any questions? Any questions of Steve and his budget request, which is the same as last oh. year? Member DeSert. Thank you, Chairman. Um, hi, Steve, how are you? Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't receive um, your budget at all. And I know that Nick Kottmeyer had said that every department was supposed to um, send the budget to board members directly. And I, I did, I not, did not know that. I didn't send it to anybody. And, and, and Member Desart, I apologize. I did not realize that Veterans was going to be going today. Uh, this, I, when I saw the agenda, so I, I so following following this meeting, can you please send your budget to every single board member? Oh, that was I, I was unaware he was he was coming today. So that was absolutely an oversight on our part. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, what do you want me to send though? I mean, just the the, the entire budget that you submitted to uh, yes. The line by line budget that you submitted to what well, Nicole sent me. There's, yeah, there's a report to Oracle that you can run. Yeah, well, Nicole Oracle sent me yeah. this report. Now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll forward it to you guys when I Thank get back you. to my desk. Okay. Thank and, you. and just for the board, um, if anybody has any questions about his budget when he actually receives it, because I, I was going to ask the same question, um, send it to me. And if we need to address it at the Finance Committee, we can do that if there are questions. But if, if we're comfortable with the budget as is, we won't do that at finance. We have other issues to address, but I'd be happy to bring it up at finance if, it, if it's an issue somebody wants to address. Okay, when's the next finance meeting, the, the next board meeting? Mm -hmm. next board meeting? Yeah, next week. I'll be available if you need me. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions of Steve? Nothing? No. Okay, thank else? you very much, Steve. Okay, I'll send that out. <laughs> well, I, I had no questions because I, I didn't see the budget, like you guys. Yeah. Okay. Again, I'll send that out. Right. Get that, get that, that out to everyone. And just so Steve, just so you know, please send it to the entire board, not just the members on this committee. We've been sending everything to every board member. So your budget. Well, that's what I. Out the that's entire. what I meant. Yeah. All board members. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Moving on to community services, I'll entertain a motion to approve FIR four five five dash twenty resolution to uh, accept and appropriate the Illinois Department of Human Services Emergency Solutions Grant so in the amount of $15,683. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the request is granted. I'm moving on to item B. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve 2020-18 a recommendation to SHI International Corporation for procurement of laptops in the amount of thirteen thousand five eighty eight eighty seven. Motion. Thank you. Motion a second. This recall is a roll call, please. If there's no discussion or questions, okay, roll call. Okay. Um, member Giciani. Aye. Member Eckhoff. Aye. Member Larson. Aye. Member Renahan. Aye. Member Desart. Aye. And Chair Tornatori. Aye. And the motion carries. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve a change order amendment to County Contract 4681 0001, serve 
issued a grant analyst.com LLC in the amount of $2,000 resulting in an amended contract total not to exceed $10,500. A motion and a second. Any discussion, questions? Roll call, please. Um, roll call then all of them? No, just these two. Is the fair committee final approval? Final approval. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm on B1, B2. 7B1. Oh, two. Okay. Um, and, and who motioned? Uh, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Member DeCiani? Aye. Member Eckhoff? Aye. Member Larson? Aye. Member Runningham? Aye. Member Desart? Aye. And Member Tornatori? Aye. And the motion carries. Moving on to item eight, Community Development Commission. I'll entertain a motion to combine and approve item eight A through F. These are all recommendations I'm to moved. modify uh, various housing development funds. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions regarding these? Carrying on saying none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. I'm moving on to item nine, DuPage Care Center. I'll entertain a motion to combine and approve items 9A1 through 4. These are all recommendations to approve contracts as well. Second. So motion and a second. Any discussion? Questions? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. Moving on to DuPage Care Center request is for a parent. Company final approval on a final motion to approve 2020 is 219. This is a recommendation to approve a contract purchase to direct supply uh, for $7,890 for a new step for incumbent bike TR4. So moved. Second. The motion and a second. Any discussion, questions? Roll call, please. Member Larson? Aye. Member Renahan? Aye. Member Desart? Aye. Member DeCiani? Aye. Member Eckhoff? Aye. Chair Tornatori? Aye. And the motion carries. I'll entertain a motion to receive and place on file grant proposal notification GPN 64 20, the Northeastern Illinois Area Agency on Aging. So moved. Second. second. Motion. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion on this matter? Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. We on our red residency waivers. Um, do we have any? No residency no waivers. No residency waivers. Moving on to community services, Mary Keating and her budget request of 2021. Mary, show's yours. Good morning. I'd like to sit at the table if that's okay. Um, uh, members who are uh, attending via Zoom, I sent an email pretty late last night. I apologize um, that it came out so late. I sent my spreadsheets on Friday as instructed. And then as I typically do, I created some supplemental information I didn't get that done till late last night. So if you uh, uh, if you've had a chance to check your email, <clears throat> the documents I'll be referencing um, are in are in that email. For those of you who are here in person, Karen has packets if you don't have access to it. So um, before I get into the detail of our 2021 budget requests and reduction scenarios, I think it's important to give you some context of the overall department operation and the relative impact of the county's general fund support. As you'll see on the first handout, labeled Community Services Budget Overview, the total budget for the Department of Community Services is approximately $26.8 million, which includes the Human Services Grant Fund at a million. The department's total budget is comprised of three general fund accounts, one special revenue fund, and 13 active grants. The general fund, excluding the Human Services Grant Fund, makes up 9% of the total department operating budget, or approximately 2.4 million of the $25.8 million operating budget. The Human Services Grant Fund is excluded here from the operating budget because it's a pass-through fund and no funding goes to support the department's operations. The general fund covers 14% of the department's total annual payroll, or approximately 1.3 million of the $9.5 million payroll. The department's current filled headcount is 135 full and part-time employees. Of those, only 25 have any portion of their salary covered by general fund, and only 12 employees in the department have their payroll covered 100% by general fund. Those employees are generally clerical or working on specific county initiatives that cannot be covered by grant funds. So you can see the general fund money, particularly the payroll portion, 
is woven into our operations and difficult to separate out from a functional perspective. The fiscal 2021 budgets that were sent to you Friday, uh, they're virtually identical to our 2020 approved budget. There's really no scenario where we anticipate lower demand for services or increased operational savings. So rather than focusing on those spreadsheets that give the detail of our requests, I'd like to review the primary categories that make up our operations. This is important background for any discussion about budget reduction scenarios. If you look at the second sheet that I sent you or that's in your packet, it's titled Community Services FY21 Budget Request Cumulative Budget Category Percentages. There I've broken down our three general fund budgets and one special revenue fund by major budget categories or expenses. For example, in the very first line, you'll see that in the Human Services General Fund budget, salaries make up 47% of our operating expenses. When salaries are combined with the paratransit program and the match for the senior services division, those three categories make up nearly 90% of the total operating budget. Working down that chart, professional services, which includes $85,000 for court advocacy for victims of domestic violence, plus 55,000 for interpreters for senior services clients, and 40,000 in fina financial support for family self-sufficiency clients, equals 98% of our total human services general fund budget. Over at the Family Center, nearly 100% of the general fund expenses are for salaries. In the Special Revenue Fund at the Family Center, you'll see that 40,000 of the $274,000 budget actually goes back to the county for facilities expenses at the 422 building. And finally, 100% of the Human Services Grant Fund goes directly to nonprofit agencies, with none of the $1 million supporting the department's operations. So as I move on to our budget, our, to discuss our budget reductions, I think you'll see it's really not possible to implement any reductions in a way that doesn't include either headcount reductions or reduced client or agency supports. Uh, moving on to the budget reduction scenario handouts. Um, these two handouts detail uh, our 10, 20, and 30% reduction scenarios that department heads were uh, required to, to submit. I'll, I'll, I'll quickly run through sort of the, the, if you will, the highlights of each one. So um, a 10% reduction in the human services budget would require $205,000 in annual savings. We'd accomplish that by the following. We would charge the salaries of two existing information and referral staff to the CSBG grant. That $70,000 would have to be moved from emergency assistance available for clients and agencies in order for the grant to cover those salary expenses. We would eliminate the $85,000 grant to Family Shelter Service to support court advocacy for victims of domestic violence. We would reduce the match provided to the Senior Services Division by $50,000, which would require spending from the reserves for that fund. And finally, we would continue to keep one part-time position open, reducing support for Giving to Page and the Volunteer Center. A 20% reduction would require an additional $200,000 in savings. That would be accomplished by implementing the 10% scenario, plus eliminating that portion of the paratransit program that provides transportation to low-income seniors, people with disabilities, traveling to medical appointments and county services. A 30% reduction would require another $200,000 in savings, and would include the 10 and 20% scenarios, plus layoffs of two staffs, two staff, thus eliminating giving to page, charging an additional staff salary to the CSBG grant, further reducing client and agency emergency support by $35,000, and a further reduction of $50,000 for the senior division match, likely deplete, depleting the entire reserve for that fund. At the Family Center, a 10% reduction would be accomplished by charging a larger percentage of the administrator's salary to the Special Revenue Fund, thus spending out of that fund's reserves. 20% reduction would include spending from the reserve fund as well as leaving a full-time mediator position vacant, resulting in at least 250 fewer mediations for court-ordered divorcing or never married parents. A 30% reduction at the Family Center would include the 20% scenario plus more reserve spending and leaving a supervised parenting time coordinator position vacant. This was, would result in at least 300 fewer supervised parenting time sessions. 
under the grant fund, any reductions in the human services grant fund would result in either fewer agencies receiving funding or a reduction in the average grant award. As you know, in the past, I've expressed concern over the amount of impact being created by small dollar amounts. A reduction in the award amounts would further reduce that impact. One mitigating factor in considering any reduction of the human services grant fund is the $4 million that has been set aside from the coronavirus relief fund, specifically to support nonprofit agencies in their COVID response. While these funds must be used specifically for COVID expenses, they, and may not represent the same programs that the Human Services Grant Fund supports, the $4 million still represent a very high level of support from the county at this time. That concludes my remarks, and with that, I'll be happy to take any questions. Any questions of Mary? Member Larson. Yes, um, in, in looking at the budget documents, the overall spreadsheets that you provided, it, it, there's no number for current expenditures in paratransit. And I'm wondering, do we have any sense? You know, I know a lot of people are staying home. I would think that number might be a lot lower than it, it otherwise would have been. Do you have any number? Yeah, the reason that there's no number in there um, is that uh, PACE is, is typically very behind on their invoices. Um, but the other issue is that we've been, we were waiting on an RTA grant so that we could pay all the, so that we could pay those expenses out. We we have paid, I don't have the, the, the year to date figure right now. Um, we have seen a reduction. So it is possible that we would be able to reduce the paratransit to some extent next year. We just don't know what, what it's gonna come back at. The expenses for um, the rides for March, particularly March, April and May were significantly down. They're coming back up again. Um, there's two components to the paratransit program. Uh, uh, about 200,000 of it is for individuals, se seniors, people with disabilities, low income in individuals getting to medical appointments or to appointments here at the county. The other, the larger portion, the 400,000 is individuals with disabilities going back and forth to work. For that portion of the paratransit program, we have a, a, a matching grant, if you will, from the RTA. So. Any, so reducing that program also then, you know, it's a 50% savings for us. You know, it's a hunt, if you, you reduce 100%, we're only saving 50% of that money, which is why I did not recommend um, any reduction in that side of the paratransit program. So um, to make a long answer even longer, uh, we, the, 2020, the 2021 paratransit program is a bit of a wild card um, in terms of what that expense will be, however, um, given that we know we're going to have more low-income people next year than we have this year, um, more uninsured folks, uh, individuals trying to get to medical appointments and using us for their transportation, I, 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 uh, I would hesitate to make an assumption that that demand is going to go down. And we may know more information over the next couple of months before we finally... We certainly it. will. Yeah, that's, that, you know, that, this is based on the knowledge I have today. But as we get into, you know, October, um, we'll probably have a better idea. Okay, and then you mentioned a couple of reserve funds that you might have to tap into in reduction scenarios. Um, what is the status of those two reserve funds? How much cash is in them? What, what's your concern about the burn rate for those? The Senior Services Division um, had been kind of, had been burning through its reserves. Um, uh, it, as, as you may recall, a couple of years ago, we spun off the Psychological Services Division just, and with the, with the specific intent of recapturing those funds um, to help shore up that, that reserve for senior services. The, this year, because of the, uh, the way we've been interacting and doing assessments, we've actually gotten, uh, had the opportunity to get caught up on our assessments. So we're, we're at a break even point for this year, which is great. Um, last I checked, I think our reserves are in the $125,000, $150,000 range. Um, so the $200,000, $250,000 match um, which is basically the same that it's been for six or eight years now, um, should be fine. If we, if we burn through those reserves next year, I, I, I don't think we'll have any left in 2022. Okay, and, then, and the reason I raise that, of course, is we're looking at scenarios where we may have to tap into the reserves of the, the general sure. revenue fund. And as we look at those scenarios where there are special revenue funds that have money that can contribute to that, that would be an issue. And the final question that I had, if I can remember it, um, I can't at the moment, so go ahead if somebody else has questions, sorry. Um, the budget for giving page, what, what is that approximately? 
uh, his one head count, one full time employee, and one part time employee. That's it. Okay. What's what's the cost on that with with the uh, benefits and everything? Probably a hundred thousand um, dollars, somewhere around there. Okay, just curious. Because I know that I mean, there's not going to be any events going on, and and uh, I'm just wondering if there's ways. We well, can this year re um, redeploy some of the resources to other areas so that we can. You know, save, save right. some money. This year, Giving to Page um, moved its uh, annual uh, human race to an online uh, giving days. Mm -hmm. um, the most we had ever raised in the, on the human race was $140,000. Mm -hmm. We re we raised uh, was it two two fifty three hundred somewhere two two hundred fifty thousand dollars on behalf of other organizations. So Giving to Page has. Uh, has absolutely responded in an online way. We've also done a lot of work um, getting volunteers connected specifically for you know COVID response. So many organizations are really hurting for volunteers. Um, that yeah, the the that that engagement of volunteers I think is has been particularly ramped up this year. So um, I do have I do have that included in my 30% reduction scenario. I certainly hope we don't go there. Mm -hmm. I just had a question about the uh, family shelter service for the victims of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. It says that there were orders of protection last year that the department dealt with, 2,136 of them. Is that the total amount in the entire court system? It just seems like a lot just for family shelter. That's what family shelter assisted with. In, this, that, in that, that's right. according to Family Shelter's data. What they provided me was that was how many um, that that's how many orders of protection they assisted with in 2019. And they all went to court. I don't know. I'll probably check that out later. But the, my, I guess my other question was, how many of those followed up? There's usually an order of protection that's issued for 14 days on an emergency basis. Then the defendant served, and then they show up and contest it. And lots of times the victims don't show up. And I was wondering if you knew how many times that happened. I can certainly get that information from. That's a grant that we provide to Family Shelter Service. That's not something that's being provided by county employees. It's a grant. It's a grant. Just a little background on why we why that's a carved out grant. So when for years when the county ran our psychological services division. Um, we did substance abuse counseling, but also counseling for perpetrators of domestic violence. And so because the county was putting significant um, funding into that side of the domestic violence issue, the county felt it was important to also be um, providing resources to victims of domestic right. violence. And so when the psychological services um, uh, was spun into uh, forensic behavioral health at, at the health department, we kept that grant um, for family shelter service within the, the community services budget. Yeah, I just wondered if the, the amount of orders of protection just seems awful high, but the state's attorney's office is off, you know, often, they bring criminal charges against a defendant, and then the victim doesn't want to proceed with the charges. And so I'm just wondering how often we work with the, the victim, and then they don't show up in court the second time. I can, so, I can find out that information. Vice Chair Runningham. Oh, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I too had uh, some concern on giving DuPage. I, I do think connecting volunteers to nonprofits is, is noble and it's important. But if we're looking at, you know, cutting some domestic violence, I mean, I know firsthand from friends, you know, to have somebody stand next to you when you're going through a difficult time with order protection is very important and serious function. If we can do that, that's incredible. Um, I'm just wondering, is there any more give? Um, we're talking about taking away from the Human Services Grant as a possibility. You know, is giving DuPage, can we, is there opportunity there to cut? Or reduce, not cut. <laughs> well, the, I mean, there is currently one full-time full, one full -time employee for giving DuPage. The part-time position is vacant, so we would be talking about a single layoff. But or, there's, I mean, that that's... There is one individual who is dedicated to giving to Page, um, along with a cadre of volunteers who support that organization. But in terms of expensive county outlay, it, it is a single head count at this time. It's one and a half in the in the approved head count load, but but in terms of filled position, it's a single head count. I mean, I hate to talk, talk about one person. That's not what I want to talk about. It's just you know we're trying to make big decisions, and you know 
looking at just priorities. Thanks, right. Mary. I, I I understand that, but my but in terms of in in terms of quantifying the current um, expense associated with giving to pages, it's ex expense of a single headcount. Thanks. Robert to start. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I have two questions. Um, my first one relates to giving to page as well. Why aren't they self-funded? Is there some reason why they can't be self-funded with the donations they receive? The giving to page um, seeks sponsors for all activities that, that the organization undertakes. So Lollapalooza, giving to page days, the giving guide, uh, the, the executive director network, all the, the volunteer portal, all of those activities are all funded by donations. Right. Why can't the donations um, be used for the employees, the full-time person and the part-time person? They could if there were more donations. If, if there was more focus on donations so the organization was competing for additional funds, I think the, the philosophy originally was that giving to pages is there to support the nonprofit agencies. And so by soliciting for donations for its own operation, it is competing with the very agencies that is, it is there to support. So the philosophy it, when Giving to Page was created back in 2001 was that the county would provide basically the space and, the, and an employee and would, and the organization as a public-private partnership would look for outside donations to support all of the various activities that the organization would undertake. The organization does actively fundraise, but it's specific to specific activities or expenses. So, so like I said, so the, um, the, the giving to page days or the human race or Volapalooza or any of the, any of the events are completely funded by donations. The, the, so only, no thing, the only thing that is not funded by no donations is the salary of a single employee. So there's no mandate that says that they couldn't self-fund? No, if they had the funding, if they, if, if fundraising is a very difficult, you know, it's a very difficult environment right now. Um, nonprofit organizations are all out there uh, raising funds. There's nothing that, that prevents giving to page from, it is a five, it is a 501c3 charitable organization. So the, all of the donations it receives for sponsorships, for events, those are all charitable donations. Those that could come back to the county to support that salary. Thank you. I was, I'm just trying to think of ways to save money because I've heard, I don't know, one, two, three, four budget presentations just this morning and everybody wants to stay funded the same, at the same level they were last year. And, and we can't do that. We're, we've lost revenue. Anyway, thank you, Mary. My second question is um, kind of a piggyback onto Member Larson's question. Could the paratransit fund be reduced since more people, especially in that demographic um, who use that service are staying home? Could that fund be reduced? I'm hesitant. I'm hesitant to make that cut today, because, specifically because I don't have enough information to project into what's going to happen in 2021. It is possible that we could trim that back to a certain extent. However, given that we're talking about low-income people traveling to medical appointments, I don't see necessarily, many of whom are on dialysis, um, I don't see that as necessarily something that's going to be um, a, a reduction in service demand. So, so, so I, I certainly can, you know, sharpen the pencil, as they say, it was as we get more information on what we what we spent um, so far this year, uh, as we get, a, you know, a month or two down of additional information, um, I can look for a projection for 2021. However, uh, my concern would be if we were to low if we were to lower that budget, and demand ramps back up. Then we'll uh, then we'll have, be in the difficult position of terminating individual service potentially at some point during the 2021 budget year. All right, thank you, Mr. Larson. Uh, just a couple points, both on that point and, and on the issue of giving you page. I do have to say, as somebody who served on the board for six years, Chipotle Trudetti is an amazing employee who does incredible work over there, and it has always been my thought that what giving you page does is promote volunteerism and 
private sector that helps to take the burden of, off of the county when we get people out there doing things. It's not just raising money, but, but helping find board members for the boards of the various not-for-profits and doing those sorts of things. Uh, you know, I understand the pressure. I'm the finance chair. I, I have to be the bad guy a lot of the time. I'm, I'm asking everybody the tough questions, and I do understand that. But I did want to, to chip in my thoughts on Chipali, who's really an amazing employee. And then with respect to paratransit, um, you know, it may be one of those scenarios where we, we look at it, if we're able to reduce it somewhat, we reduce it. And then if we determine that during the budget year, we have additional funds that sales tax revenue picks up in the beginning of next year, that we can backfill that um, as a budget priority. But I understand your concerns as well about cutting it down. Or when I brought up the giving the page, I, I no 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 means uh, uh, would want to hurt Shafali, and uh, I work with Shafali in several capacities. She's awesome. What I was thinking is maybe we could roll, roll her into a different role uh, if there's attrition coming up or whatever in your office, so that her time and her value is best used. And maybe if we can get a report on what's been going on there with uh, the volunteerism and et cetera, then that, that would give us a little more support. But I would never want to. Um, Heard an employee like Shivali. Uh, again, I work well with her, um, but she has worn multiple hats in the county, so she's pretty amenable uh, to, to making moves. Uh, and if this is going to be a, a dead year of fundraising, I just think it might be a, a you know a good thing to think about. Um, you still keep the 501 in place. If it's going to be online, it's going to be a lot less boots on the ground and more. Uh, again, uh, maybe put her uh, her talents in a different area in your in your area, community services, etc. Side. So just, just food for thought, just trying to maximize personnel and Sure, and sure, costs. I understand without, that. Without getting rid of, you know, an entity or-, or uh, right. right, I certainly, or employee, I, I certainly understand. It, it's just important to understand that there, the only savings that there would be would be if, sure. if that employee were to move into a grant funded position, which requires potentially completely different skill set. And so, mm -hmm. um, it, it, aside from the fact that personnel practice is, if a, if a job is changing significantly, that individual has to apply for that job. We don't just sort of slot sure. people into different roles. And so um, I was absolutely, I, I you know, I, um, she's a highly, highly valued employee of the department, um, has tremendous skills. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I, I will take your, your suggestion into consideration um, as we, as we look for, you know, I mean, this isn't any fun for me either. This is, uh, you know, we were advised to, to do a 10, 20, and 30% walk down. Um, none of these decisions are, are taken lightly. None of them are done without um, tremendous consideration on my part. So um, please understand that I'm not being cavalier about any, about any of this. Um, I don't like any of this any more than, than you do. Um, I'm simply, uh, presenting the very difficult reality that everything that we do, all of the general fund uh, dollars that go into uh, this department specifically impact either people in need or the agencies that support them. Okay, Keep, keeping in mind that we don't want to take any time away from Janelle and the Care Center budget and this meeting has to end by 1030 because we have a significant agenda on the development committee. I would like to just get a sense of the committee re regarding the human service grant fund. And Mary's budget has eliminated that this morning, um, that million dollars. Well, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. It is, inclu it, it is included in my budget. So in my budget request, I included it as, because I'm, you know, we, we, submit, our, we submit a status quo budget. So the status quo budget that I submitted included the million dollar grant fund. Okay, well, then I'm misreading where the community services operating budget excluded the human services grant fund. Um, that's, that's so that I could, that, so I could show sort of how the general fund supports our operations. I did not include the human services grant fund in that figure because it, it really does not support your operations. It, it doesn't okay. support the operations. Okay. But as you and I have talked prior to today's meeting, there will be some discussion regarding the Human Services Grant Fund yes. as it applies to the general fund and, and the budget of the county. And I think I'm looking for maybe some comment or a sense from, if you want to start it, Mary, and give us your opinion. I know you touched on it briefly about not wanting to reduce significantly the amount because there comes a point where 
the break-even point is at, at some number where the cost of, of funding this exceeds the, uh, the benefits, so to speak. Right. So okay, if you want to... Sure, so I think there's two things to consider. I, I, I would not personally be an advocate for reducing the amount of money. If, if it were to exist, I would not reduce it further. The, as I've said before, I'm very concerned when we're giving an agency a two or three thousand dollar grant, what impact, what actual impact that grant is having. Not, and it's not, you know, the well now they can they have the sort of you know the the seal of approval and it helps them raise additional money. Our funds are supposed to be used as as uh, almost like a a contract. The agency says it will deliver X. It will deliver so many hours of counseling or so many meals. And so if we're giving them a very small amount of money, what deliverables we're actually receiving, um, I, I, I am concerned about. And so if the grant fund were at say $500,000 and we were still funding the same number of agencies, I'd be very concerned about the actual impact we're having. I do think the $4 million that uh, the, the county board has set aside from the coronavirus relief fund is a significant um, investment into the nonprofit community. I've heard from lots of agencies that they're extremely grateful to the county for providing that level of response. So if the, if the grant fund were to be eliminated, um, like I said in my presentation, it's not, it's not necessarily a one for one. Well, the grant fund used to fund this, so now the CRF can fund it, but it's still funding going to those agencies at four times the amount that we, um, that we have historically provided through the Human Services Grant Fund. So I think if it were to be, um, if it were be, to be eliminated for 2021, I, I would like to see, you know, maybe some sort of expectation that might come back in 2022 in a maybe a different, slightly different format, maybe more targeted. Um, you know, uh, if I if I were a member of the board, which I am not, um, you all have incredibly difficult decisions in front of you. Um, I think because of the $4 million of the coronavirus relief fund, I think that softens the blow a little bit, if you will. Um, we, I think 45 of the agencies that have historically received uh, human services grant fund have applied for that, that CRF funding, the applications were due on Friday. So um, we're, you know, that, we're reaching basically the same pool of agencies. So my personal recommendation would be to, to uh, eliminate the Human Services Grant Fund for 2021. This is my personal view, given that you can soften the blow from, by providing that additional, that other sorts of funding. Okay, um, all right. And, and again, I just wanted to get a sense because this is going to obviously come up with finance and I, I think it's important for us to, understand how this is going to affect the budget and also Mary's recommendation. And I guess if there is a year to eliminate it, this would be the year because we've got, we've got the, the CARES fund money, which has somewhat funneled into those, those entities. Um, okay, if, there's, if there are no further questions of Mary, I want to make sure, right, one more question. Uh, yeah, I do have a question. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You said basically the same pool. I guess I just want to know what are the gaps? Like, I mean, if we take federal tax dollars to basically supplant the county dollars that we use for human services grant fund, what are the edges? Like, what are, what are the, what's not? Um, I haven't done a rundown of what agencies. All I know is that we, we sent information out to um, all of the agencies that re have received the human services grant fund in the last five years. 44 of them applied for this funding opportunity. I did not look at which agencies did not apply. I could certainly get, get to that information. So um, it's not- I, I'd be curious to know, because I mean, yeah. what you're saying makes a lot of sense. And I think it helps the county out quite a bit. You just, you know, you're concerned about, you know, who falls down flat. Right. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Mary. I assume there's no more questions, Mary. Do you want to take a sense of the committee vote on that issue? Or? On the human service grant fund? Okay, sure. I mean. Let's, what, what's the sense of the committee regarding eliminating the human services grant fund? Are we all on board with Mary's, I don't want to call it a recommendation because I don't want to 
put the handlebar mustache on her, but the, the, <laughs> is the, if, if, if we're all okay with that, and when it's brought to finance, it probably would Wait, help us move through that. I'm okay with it, provided we don't hurt certain you know, major, I, I'm thinking domestic violence and things like that, that might not get COVID money. So I'd like to see that list of, of like what Julie mentioned, um, maybe that list of people who are sure. gonna be excluded because they don't apply for COVID or, you know, uh, so we can just get a better feel. If it, we should totally get rid of it, because um, uh, the $4 million in COVID will uh, help a lot more and, and, and given the situation, or, or maybe we look at uh, a major reduction and, and at least trying to help some of those agencies that won't, won't be able to get COVID money, but sure. so. And I think we have to remember the, the money that we give through the Human Services Grant Fund doesn't entirely fund those agencies. It's just a small part of it. So Absolutely. it's not like if we don't give them sure. the money, they're going to be eliminated. So sure. Um, okay, okay, well, I with, with that. I could just add to that, yeah. just well, a, a specific criteria of the grant fund is that they cannot apply for any more than 50% of the total cost of any individual program. So we're never funding more than half. And in most cases, we're funding maybe 10 or 15% of an actual program. And it's a program, not an agency. Program, yeah, it funds programs, not agencies. The reason why I bring up domestic violence is because during COVID, we have a huge increase in this area. And if we, if they're not gonna get any COVID money, um, you know, I wanna make sure we've got resources for, for those, those folks, so. Okay, well, with that caveat that, that Mary's going to get us, hopefully, that information and see how it affects uh, certain certain entities, um, we'll move on. Okay. All right, uh, Janelle, the budget for the CARES Morning. Act, your request. Sure. I'll make it quick. Um, I want to start with some highlights here. We were able to empty out our COVID unit last week entirely, which is a huge accomplishment. Um, we also were able to eliminate isolation on any of our eight units. Um, we've, since April, we've had 28 residents that have had the virus and 35 staff. When we're talking over 700 individuals, those numbers are um, quite remarkable. We're doing about 6,000 tests uh, uh, so far. We're doing five to 600 a week. Uh, so obviously we'll keep the COVID unit intact because we will likely need it on an ongoing basis here and there. We pray it's only here and there. With that, I'll move on to the budget. Um, our budget for 2021 is a status quo. It mimics 2020. Um, the unique uh, uh, budget process for the care center compared to other county entities is we have revenue. Um, our revenue uh, would need to match or closely match our expenses. So you can see that on the document I provided to everyone. It, it's essentially a break even budget. Um, revenues, you can see that we have an overall increase of 2.9% revenue. We are seeing a tick up. Um, if you reference the other support document I provided, the graph, the first chart gives you what we're paid per diems for each of our payer sources, Medicaid, private pay insurance, and Medicare. You'll see we're getting a, a bump up in Medicare, which usually occurs annually. Um, and then our private pay increase, which we would submit through the board um, at a later date as our usual uh, percentage increase on an annual basis. So those are our per diems, which also lead into that 2.9% increase. We continue to have 339 beds in operation. Um, we're looking at about a 95% occupancy. Obviously, we're down a little bit because of COVID, but we also have in excess of 15 people um, waiting to come in, and some of them are being pretty persistent. <laughs> so about wanting to come in, we can't let them come until we're able to. So we're close. Um, you can see the payer mix there, and again, that's on the graph. We're maintaining an, a, over a 70% um, Medicaid for our population um, as the safety net for the county. And I say this every year, but I want to make sure everyone understands the number of Medicaid beds, especially in a quality facility in DuPage County, is very low. The number of Medicaid beds we have here at DuPage County Care Center is very important to this community. Anything less would make it very hard for the indigent. Moving on to our Medicaid reimbursement, I talked about that already. We obviously, we have a bed tax that we have every year. That's not changing. We, we still are participating in our intergovernmental agreement with HFS for county homes. Um, again, that's because we serve the predominantly Medicaid. 
I talked about the 3% in, or an increase. We're going to pro propose a 3%, which would come to you later. We have other revenues that are there. Um, and then, of course, the county subsidy. Um, in prior years, it was $3 million. Last year, it was reduced down to 2 And we're looking at maintaining that to this year. Uh, when you look at our expenses for 2021 budget, we're looking at a 0% overall increase. Our largest uh, category of expense is obviously our personnel. That's about 67% of our budget. It's actually down a little bit for 2020, um, excuse me, 2021. We did put in the 0.2% for health insurance, the appropriate IRMF, the appropriate uh, for benefit payouts, and then you'll see the zero for cost of living. When we come down to commodities, those are things like our food and drugs and medical costs. Um, we are seeing a little bit of a decrease there in our budgeting process. Um, moving on to contractuals, uh, this is up um, from prior years. You can see our utilities are up 4.5%. Uh, contingencies are up for unexpected expenses, but predominantly for the cost of prior cost of living increases. And then agency is really just a shift from regular wages to agency to help cover those um, expenses that we've been seeing over 20, uh, 2020, just shifting the dollars from one category to another. Um, under capital, that's down slightly. You can see the 897 for building improvements and then the items that make up that are down below. So it's electrical upgrades, which is part of the C CDBG funding, elevator repairs, nurse station, all of air handling, uh, IDPH tank contingency, you can read those there. Additional operational capital items, replacement wheelchairs, therapy equipment, and dining services we do every year. So for our walk down, 10% um, would be 200,000, 20% would be 400,000, and 30% would be 600,000. Um, I propose that all of that, you know, any of those categories would all have to come from capital. Uh, keep in mind, these items are predominantly life safety code or mechanical, um, but that is the, still the best option for the care center at this point. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you, Janelle. Any questions of Janelle? Remember to start. Thank, thank you so much for everything you do, Janelle. And I think it's just remarkable that our numbers at the care center, the COVID numbers at the care center are are, have been so low. Um, I have a couple of questions. One, um, what is what is non-patient care under revenues? What does that look like? What is non-patient care? Um, the other revenue category B? Yes. Okay. So um, we uh, provide services to the cafes across the street. We also have an outpatient pharmacy, and then we provide cleaning services to other entities within the county. Gotcha. I didn't know that. Okay, thank you. Um, question number two, 3% uh, private pay increase. When is the last time we increased the private pay rates? Um, it's generally done in the industry annually, anywhere. Sometimes it's two to four or five, six percent. We've done either two to three percent each year. I thought we voted on, on an increase yes. last year. Okay, so going along with that, um, is, going along with what you said about it's generally higher, um, the staffing costs went up 2.3%, utilities are up 4.5%. So my question is, is a 3% increase enough? Should we ask for more? For the private pay? Yes. Okay, so we have to be a little careful not to price ourselves out of the market. But a lot of what we see when people come in is that they have limited funds and they're going to convert to Medicaid. That is the biggest reason why we are able to attract uh, private pay. Uh, so we have to be very careful what that amount is. Gotcha. Thank you so much. Yep. Any other questions of Janelle? There are none. Okay. Well, thank you, Janelle. Once again, your budget is very easy to understand. Good. <laughs> as as Good. Mary's was. <laughs> Good. Far more than some of the others we get. <laughs> <laughs> Thank okay. you. Um, that concludes the two budget requests. Do we have anything under old business? Any old business? Any new business? There being no new business, without objection, we're adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.